All right, this video I'm gonna talk about our Singapore. Oops, 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 Singapore juniors category. Okay, basically the P3 to P5 format. Very quick recap it's a 3v3 format, two small goals. Right, and if I just draw it very quickly in a smaller area, you have one goal post to defend, two goal posts to defend on each side, and you have one, two, three, one, two, three, three v three format. Like my handwriting, I mean my drawing. But anyway, okay. Uh, this video will talk about what kind of preparations, approach, guidelines you can give to the young ones, and in order to prep for this format now this is a relatively new format so for most most coaches including me uh, back in 2018 we are all like a bit surprised and shocked uh, but i came up with a few guidelines um, and then from there i i trained my kids towards that okay but essentially okay what i did firstly was to create the positions for the kids okay number one uh, last man or you can take it as the last defender number two the center and number three the top forward so then among your kids you will give them each a row okay when they play okay now based on these rows they will then follow the guidelines accordingly and then that will help them um, play the game and the more they play they get used to it the more they play the better chemistry so on and so forth okay but first things first create these three positions okay so next i'm just gonna talk about the guidelines okay guidelines both in defense and also in attack let's talk about defense okay in doing defense all right first one of the first things I tell my top forward to do okay, it's to prevent a switch pass so what I'll do is I'll explain the guideline and then show it uh, on the board over here so what do you mean by prevent switch pass I'm just going to draw the two small goal posts Okay, and um, you know like, the imaginary center line. Okay, so we are uh, circle, Ta -da, circle, and this is my top forward. Okay, and you don't have the ball, right? Because you are in defense. So say your opponent is in triangle and your opponent has the ball over here, and say you have another opponent over here. So the idea of preventing a switch pass is to keep them only on one side. Because it's a three on three situation. What I'm telling my players is let's not get into the situation where they make a monkey out of you. They pass back and forth, pass back and forth, and then you have to run and run and then tie yourself up. So in order to do that is to prevent the switch pass. So positioning is key, placing the sticks is key. So this this little kid over here, if this guy has the ball over here. You are to pressure him. Pressure him in a one-on-one -on -one situation. And put your sticks over here. Put your stick over here in order to prevent the switch pass. So you are indirectly forcing him down. Or another best case scenario, back. So this is the role of this forward. That's number one, prevent the switch pass. Okay? Next, next is this idea of center up, forward down. This takes um, better chemistry and understanding by the teammates together. And so what it means is this. And it relates to the first point uh, in preventing a switch. Say, he goes, but 
he prevented he prevented the prevention of the switch and so the switch came in the switch goes in he is stranded he is on him over here and then you have a center guy right this center guy will then go up so the center will go up he will realize it and oops i need to come down so they are switching rows one up one down so in the split moment they literally switch the rows from a uh, forward to a def uh, to a center and center to a forward and then again with that you're hoping that they do not switch it back you either keep them here or you again push them back you get the idea that's the second third we come back oh sorry i should have wrap, wrap it off switch pass and third basically is on the defender where he or she needs to be able to read the situation and move accordingly why because in my way of playing i'm not permanently placing two person in each goal i'm placing this last defender and this last defender must be able to judge based on the series of play that is happening in front of him or her he must know whether he needs to cover this goal more or he needs to cover this goal more so which, which means this last defender has to be mobile because theoretically he's the last defender he's the last man the last wall the last layer okay so he must be able to read the situation and switch from one side to the other side accordingly and so it brings back to the first point if you are able to prevent the switch pass example back into the situation here where he, this guy the top forward managed to prevent the switch pass cut let's say he goes there or go back there what this last defender do is he will move it and plant himself here more and so therefore you are cramping the play only on one side and hopefully you win the ball over here or say if he brings it back you win the ball over there then after that you play it again i hope that's simple enough okay and lastly whatever it is based on the first three points with that movement and so-called planning and, and, and tactics right at the end of the day they are always maintaining in a triangle shape very important triangle shape so you can see over here already there is a triangle shape if say just now they fail to prevent the switch the pass goes over here he goes up he goes down he would also come and switch over here wrap it off and you can see the triangle shape which is being maintained all right i hope that helps on the defending side i'm gonna quickly switch towards the offensive side now offensively obviously there'll be more guidelines um so in offense okay in offense the very first thing uh is actually you do the reverse right because in defense you want to stop them but in offense you want to open things up so what i tell them is is to switch play if they can see two layers let me explain Switch play, switch play, switch play, switch play. This is the center line again. Okay, let's talk about us now over here. Let's say now the defender has the ball. Okay, pop. And he noticed that, oh, there is one on him and there is one at the back. You know, just protecting the goal. So there's one layer and two layer. Which also means that with two players over here, the available space is more towards here. So with this defender having the ball, he is not to rush the play by just shooting or just dumping the ball down, but rather see if he can switch the play to the other side. Be it a center coming down to offer the pass or dribble across. Okay, switching of play can be 
again dribbling or passing and if you do it nicely a few times you are literally trying to tire down this person and then sooner or later you might be able to see an opening remember there's two goal posts and not just one okay which brings to the next point actually which i kind of just mentioned so monkey your opponent monkey as in monkey okay in order to tire him so if you do a few switch pass this top forward or this opponent will be just running left and right sooner or later you'll be able to see one layer whereby example let's say he tires down a switch pass gone through here you have the ball here and he fails to recover and so what happens you will most likely see just one layer because it's the other side and if you see one layer what i tell my kids is if you see you one versus one brings on to the third point there to shoot if you see one layer so i'm, I'm trying to give them that the boost of confidence that bravery that courage to, to to dare to take the shot okay so if you see just one layer be it just him pressuring you or him just alone at the goal is to be able to make that quick decision to say come i'm just going to take this shot okay so this is the first three points so far switch if there's two layers whether is it dribbling or passing being able to monkey your opponent uh, at the top and then if you see that one layer go ahead and shoot it okay now fourth guideline fourth guideline for my top forwards because so far i've been talking about the defending the defender the last man right the last man in center the top forward you are to you are to position yourself higher and be able to be comfortable staying in the center meaning to say that my top forward you want to wrap up again My top forward must be able to be comfortable staying in the center and being able to be mobile to be able to switch left and right. Because if the play is ongoing, you, you never know where you are needed. If you have a top forward who is just permanently planting himself or herself here, it is so easy to just cut the pass, defend 1v1 situation, and this guy might be just out of the game. If the forward comes down too low, you are essentially just cramping yourself up and won't have enough uh, what you call offensive threat in the offensive side so it needs to be higher center and then being able to anticipate the left and right so you can see i literally just flip myself around in terms of how i defend and attack all right and this forward row okay because you're in the center and you're mobile you are essentially offering the which is brings to my fifth point rebound rebound okay he needs to rebound he needs to be that rebounder okay when the shot comes in when the shot comes in because of the fact that i say you must dare to shoot when you see one layer okay so then the forward must be the rebounder okay so come to the next to the sixth point is escape when you are at the corner that means you do not get trapped at all do not get trapped at all now corner you have obviously four corners you have your defending corners and you have your offensive corner so i always tell them do not get trapped if he gets she gets trapped over here the ball comes here I do not want her to get trapped here or him here she has to escape away escape away quick pass the ball quick if you get trapped here again escape quick before you find the option to pass it up and if the forwards get trapped here same thing i do not want him or her to trap here escape or escape quickly 
Okay? So that, that will allow the movement of the ball to be a lot more fluid and faster. Now, because this play also, and then that's how, I mean, that's how you build up to the next play, whereby when the forwards have the ball, okay, the center will support. Example, when the forward have the ball here in the corner, my center, let's say the forwards have somehow managed to get the ball at the corner, Okay, my center, let's say it was originally here, offering the support. When the boy is at the corner, he or she will come in and support. And that's how you attack, at the very least in twos. Okay, then where the defender go? The defender will most probably be here, again, maintaining the triangle shape. So when forward have the ball, center, support. Forward have the ball, the center, Q will be, I need to support him or her. Alright, and lastly, I tell them, accuracy is more important than power. Why? Because we are playing, we are playing small goalposts. These are small. They are not big. And because with the fact that you have two options, right? I tell them you need to be more accurate, which means they need to be much more composed rather than to shoot a damn powerful shot because the likelihood of the ball you know flying off the goalpost is actually higher and so that will be the last point and uh, in the drills i'll focus on getting them to be accurate towards the the goal uh, boost their confidence that way they know where the goalpost is and rather than you, you have to shoot them hard okay so these are the the, the few points uh, on how i prepare uh, tactically um, in terms of the, the, the juniors category. There's a lot of points. I uh, hope you can digest it. This is almost a 70 minute video. Um, I hope that helps. Alright, see you in the next one.